to all of you and a very good day to all of you. Okay, I am Wan Jihadah Binti Ahmad okay, from Faculty of Computing and Multimedia. Alright, uh, so I would like to share okay, a little bit information about online learning today. Alright, so what is all about okay, and how to do, uh, what are the tools okay, required in order to perform online learning. Alright, now... Okay, the highlights for today is basically I'm going to talk about okay, online learning delivery. Okay, what is online learning? Okay, how many methods are there? All right, number two, okay, what are the tools that we can use in order to perform or to deliver online content? And how do you want to encourage or to keep students to be engaged okay, in your session? All right, online delivery can be divided into two types, okay, whether it is a synchronous or asynchronous method. Okay, the synchronous, okay, bear in mind, okay, it involves living in real-time settings such as live text chats, okay, instant messaging, teleconferencing, video conferencing, virtual classroom, okay, live streaming lecture and such. Okay, so the key points, okay, if you want to consider, okay, your delivery as a synchronous, Okay, you must be able to carry live session with students. Okay, it is a two-way communication interactively. And also it requires, of course, a good internet, uh, a good internet connection because you need to ask okay, or you have to perform your Q&A session online. Okay, the other type is asynchronous, okay, which involves materials prepared okay, by instructor for learners to review at their own time, okay, such as recorded audio, key video, key recorded slides, create with narration, key digital, digital documents, key discussion boards and such. So the main key points key for asynchronous, okay, uh, number one, key opposite of synchronous, it do not carry live session to with students. Okay, you mu lecture must be able to provide pre-recorded uh, video to students. Student access material and study at their own convenient time and pace. Okay. Right, so this is the differences between asynchronous and also synchronous. Okay, next we're gonna look on some example of tools that we can use in order to perform our online content or deliver our online content. Okay, the, these are all very familiar, popular key tools. Okay, however, it is divided into asynchronous and asynchronous. Okay, for synchronous, for example, we have such as uh, WebEx, okay, uh, Zoom, okay, WhatsApp. Telegram, Padlet, and also Google Meet. Okay, because all these tools enable uh, as a lecturer okay, to deliver your content and also ask Q&A okay, uh, real time. Okay, whereas asynchronous, okay, for example, if you upload your material okay, onto these tools and students can access them at other later time. Okay, for example, like YouTube, okay, Moodle, okay, G, uh, Google Suite, okay, WordPress, okay, Blog, Blogger, and also Loom. Okay, how do you keep a student to engage, okay, uh, interested in our lecture, okay, online? All right, so basically you have to ensure that uh, students are prepared, okay, uh, there are some things, okay, that you need to keep in place, okay, before the actual session takes place, okay, and then, uh, of course, okay, during the actual section, session, okay, there are some uh, key points to highlight. Okay, for example, before actual session, okay, you must ensure uh, engage student prior to live session. In other words, like you keep them, message them, okay, inform them, okay, the time and place, or maybe the slot, okay, the day, okay, where the session will, will actual take place. Okay, uh, you can actually message them via WhatsApp, okay, Telegram, email, and such. Okay, second one is uh, student do the initial activities. Okay, uh, another one way of how to ensure that student actually looking forward to your session is make sure you give some kind of a guideline to them. Okay, uh, in order to uh, participate in this live session, what are the things that needed that needed to be done? Okay, for example, like uh, actual prepared note. Okay, uh, settings. Okay, and such. Okay, and also right before the actual se session takes place, okay, you must uh, check whether or not your students are 
available are they ready to start the class okay maybe you can do some attendance checklist okay readiness okay uh, check whether the microphone is on okay whether the students are in front of the laptops okay uh, during the sessions okay and such okay Pretty, uh, basically it's just like uh, attendance check okay in general okay and then during the actual session you can uh, instead of having your face okay on the screen okay you can actually use the slides okay or whatever content okay that you have material okay that you have prepared okay using that okay uh share the screen and then uh, do some kind of like voice narration okay so that they are not distracted okay on your facial feature but rather than that they're focusing on the material okay, that you have prepared Okay, and then uh, of course you need to run some simple activities. Okay, after one uh, session has already completed, for example, like do some simple quiz, okay, via Kahoot or other tools, okay, that uh, available. All right, so when you're done with this, okay, you are set to go. Okay, let's recheck again. Okay, what uh, I've checked so far. Okay, number one, online delivery. Uh, delivery could be in a form of synchronous or asynchronous. Okay, number two, the tools. There are various supporting tools. Okay, but make sure all these tools is suitable with your group uh, of students. Okay, because some of the students may be in a rural area. Okay, their internet connection is very low and such. So certain tools uh, can cater for low uh, bandwidth of internet. So make sure it is suitable okay, with your uh, readiness okay, of your group. Students. Okay, and of course, okay, make sure student is engaged okay, with your learning. Okay, so make sure you do the before and during session. But of course, okay, there is afterwards okay, uh, the session, which is uh, assessment check and such. But that would be, uh, I will share that another day, inshallah. So that's all for today. Okay, uh, good luck okay, with your online teaching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, my name is Suhaili Muhammad Ramli. I'm from Faculty of Business Accountancy and Social Science. Uh, today I'm going to teach you guys number of online platform to help you deliver your teaching and learning online. Uh, of course, there are numerous applications available in the market. However, for this session, we have decided to choose four online platform, namely Oles, Google Meet, Padlet, and Zoom. We will start our session with OLES online learning system, which you can access is accessible through oles.kuptm.edu.my. Okay, let me brief to you what OLES is. OLES is an official one-stop center for online teaching and learning at KUPTM and KPTM. So all lecturers here have to use this system. Uh, function is to support and enhance teaching and learning with the use of ICT. How? Students and lecturers can interact at any time to the multimedia features provided. So this is very good thing. Okay, because anywhere you are, you can have access to less, you can make an announcement even with the use of your mobile phone. Okay, among the interesting things that you can do with OLES. Uh, you can manage teaching and learning materials according to week and topic, uh, which I will show you later. Making course announcement, especially now that we are conducting online, uh, we'll need, uh, uh, it will be better to use or less to make a course announcement. So everything is centralized instead of, you know, uh, make announcement using your WhatsApp, your email. Uh, so just focus on one platform to make an announcement. Assignment submission, you can ask your student to submit assignment through or less. So it will be centralized too. And then you can also conduct forum discussion in or less. Okay, so I will be focusing on all this uh, in our uh, learning session. Uh, this is what your OLS looks like. Okay, if you uh, type OLS at kpdm.edu.my, uh, in order to enter, you have to log in. Okay, username would be your FB. 
and then password then just log in uh, you will see in the course view the subject that you will assign for that semester okay this is just a sample i'm just going to show you my or less uh, so let's just take a look at this okay <clears throat> Uh, you will see that uh, the OLS is arranged according to the week. Okay, so of course, eh, if you get the OLS, it will be empty. All this will be empty. So what you can do is that you can label your OLS. Okay, let's say this is week one. So you just write week one here. I'm going to show you how to put that later. You can put a picture to welcome your students. You can put all information that have to do in that particular week. Okay, normally first week you discuss syllabus, so you can put your syllabus, all the assessment, and also the topic that you covered in that week. Okay, uh, so the same also with uh, week two, you can put the announcement for quiz, uh, the case study, the due date, okay, and then the announcement, where should it, uh, it be submitted, and then uh, this is uh, where the student can submit. Uh, you can put animated pictures, Try to make your OLAS informative, okay, and attractive so that the student will you know, refer to it a lot. Okay, and then uh, you can put everything, case study submission when uh, the, the mid-semester break, uh, so that student would know, they do, they're not going to ask you so many times. This is how, you can put your forum here, okay, uh, so this is how the forum looks like. Okay, uh, same also, final exam, okay, you can put the link, so try to make your OLS uh, informative that students will be, you know, rely on your OLS. Because there's so many things that you can do with your OLS. How to start your OLS? Okay, this is what you have to do in order to start your OLS. Or else it will not be function. Uh, you have to turn editing on. Okay, look at the button there. Okay, and then you will see it. Eh? Once it changed to this point, then you can start uh, make some changes in your OLS. You can start labeling your OLS. You can start attaching uh, all the files that you want okay, in that particular week. Okay, let's take for example, I'm going to show you how to attach your files. Okay, so notice that this is turn editing off. Already, so meaning you can do many change here. So what you can do in order to attach all the files here, like what I did here, course information case study, you just open your folder, okay, and then let's put it side by side. Just drag, drag the file from the folder to this area. Just drag, move, yeah, move your files. So that's it. Very simple. Just drag the file. Okay, it will be there automatically. You don't have to click any button. So how simple it is. Okay, how to label your OLS? Okay, first thing you need to click in the setup icon. Click on this uh, setup icon to insert text, picture, and link. Okay, then you will see this. So uh, you can type eh, in this area. Your announcement, yeah, whatever you want, you type in this area. You can attach picture. You can just cut and paste. Uh, you can get the picture from your website. Maybe interesting picture that have to do with your course. Okay, you can just copy and paste it in this area. You can insert picture also from your file, yeah, from your folder. You can insert a link, for example, like URL, yeah, anything that you want uh, that you want your students to read. Or maybe a Google Drive, a Google Link yeah, also can. Okay, once done, you just need to press this button, Save Change. Okay, so the outcome will be like this. Okay, this is just a sample. Okay, think of what you can do to your or less later. Okay, for assignment submission, uh, you just need to click in at an activity or resources then you will see this okay just click in on assignment okay, once you click in there 
will get this. Okay, you just need to fill in what is the name of your assignment, what is the description, maybe you can put the instruction. Okay, uh, so this is how you may want to put a file here that related to your assignment. Okay, and then you can also uh, update the allow when you want your submission to be uh, to be submitted. Yeah? Allow submission from, the due date, the cutoff date, so you can adjust it here. And then what are the submission types? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be a file submission? Okay. And then how many files you want to be submitted? Yeah, all this just click in. And then, okay, uh, require student to click submit button. You may want to put yes. Okay, require students to accept the submission statement. Okay, better that way so at least students have a proof that they have submitted. Okay, once done, you just need to save and return to the course or save and display. Let me show you sample of assignment submission. You just click in like this. So you just uh, fill in like this. Group assignment, okay. Put it uh, all the particulars, all the descriptions that you want. Okay, and then you're going to see it like this. So this is what the students say. Uh, what you're going to, how you view it in your OLS. Okay. And this is how the students going to get it. Okay. This is how the student going to submit. How they're going to submit is that they just can drag the file to this area. Okay, very simple. They can submit their assignment by dragging and attaching their file in the file submission box. Or they can provide a link of the assignment by clicking the link button. Okay, so they just put their URL there. So this is how the student submit their assignment. Okay, actually, stu the student have no problem uh, to sum the assignment. They really know how to use this. Okay, lecturer can view the assignment by submitted, eh? submit submitted by clicking the view, grade, or submission. Okay, when they click the 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 the, uh, the submission, so they can see. Uh, this point just click on this then yeah, you're going to see it group assignment submission what you need to do is just click on download all submissions so it will automatically download to your folders and you can have all your students assignment so it's simple step okay now we move to the discussion forum at OLS what is discussion forums Okay, you can see that it's an activity where students and lecturers can exchange ideas by posting comments. Okay, it's very interesting. Eh? Uh, benefit a lot of students to have asynchronous discussions. Engaging students in discussion of course materials. Getting feedback or reaction eh, or reply to content in the forums. Okay, I will show you some examples later. Okay, how to do this is click on the same like what you did in the assignment submission add an activity or resources you'll see these activities you just need to click forum okay once you click that forum uh we're going to give you okay this you just need to okay what is the what is your forum name put the description and then you have to choose the type of your forums. Okay, which one you want it to be. So, okay, this is the example of the forum types. Okay, single simple discussion. Is it going to be standard forum for general use? Each person posts one discussion. So, meaning the student can also post, uh, discuss certain topic. Q&A forums or standard forums. So it will be up to you which forums that you prefer for your objective. Okay, the sample of discussion forum. Let me show you one of the, uh, the sample. Okay, these are the forum discussion on group assignment. So I specifically put one forum so that if the student have a discussion on group, want to ask question in the, uh, on group assignment, they can ask it here so that my reply will be also be seen by others. Okay, for example, here, if you have a question on group assignment report, please 
your question here. Okay, and then the student, if you notice that, okay, uh, let's say for example, like this student, okay, uh, she want to verify whether uh, what she did is correct. So she attach the pictures and then ask question. Okay, it's very simple. If you look at, okay, like this, okay, and then, you know, you just praise the student, they have done well. Students really like this. Okay, and then uh, let's say, for example, like this student, I have question for marketing strategy. Is the point on the marketing which in the product means pricing uh, the same as in topic five? So this also st this student also asks for clarification. So this is a beauty thing eh, of having a forum discussion. You can think of so many others. Uh, what you can do with this? Maybe you can ask the students to uh, to discuss or to define. Okay, try to get from the website and share it in this forum. Okay, uh, this is another sample, uh, forum on topic seven. So this is on topic uh, in my chapters. Okay, for example, here I put my PowerPoint, uh, which I just put a link. Okay, and then I put a video explaining the PowerPoint. And then once the student have read all this, I put it here, compulsory individual exercise on topic seven. So many after they have seen my video, they have to answer the questions. Uh, this is a Google form, okay, short essay questions. So this is sort of, sort of like attendance. Lah. Okay, if you have any question on topic seven, please do not hesitate to ask. Good luck. Okay, so the students can reply once they're done. Okay, I'm done, I'm done, yeah, thank you. So uh, this is another way you can use forum because you want to see your student reaction. Yeah? Okay, archive. Uh, what does it mean here is that uh, um, let's say if you uh, for this semester if you want to uh, look at uh, look back at the files that you have done in your previous semester you can always look back in your or less okay your previous or less is available okay maybe you have some of the files uh, that you want to refer to in your previous or less you can always look at the archive so it's still available even though if you are in the uh, current semester okay how to how to go to it is that you just need to click site home okay click site home okay here then you will get all this okay so that's it yeah, for or less The next session will be Google Meet. This is an enterprise level video conferencing application from Google. Okay, the best thing about Google Meet is that you can have a video meeting with your students. Your click, uh, just share a link to get uh, them to join your meeting. This uh, Google Meet can be a good replacement for your traditional face-to-face -face interaction in delivering your teaching and learning. So instead of face-to-face, -face, you can use Google Meet instead. Why Google Meet? If you look at here, it's a plug and play approach, no installation required because it's attached in your Gmail. If for the best result, you are encouraged to use Google Chrome and it is optimized for Google Meet usage. Okay, it's better to use Google Chrome, even though it's available in the Mozilla and Internet Explorer, you need to use Google Chrome, especially for certain extension. It can also be used from a smartphone and tablet. Use KUPTM Gmail for Google Meet. Okay, this is where the Google Meet is located. It's located at the left panel of the KUPTM Gmail. Click the Start a Meeting under the Meet header. Okay, then you will get this. Okay, when the meeting is ready, uh, click on join now. Okay, once you click on that, okay, you will be given um, to start uh, to add participants. You can add participants. Uh, just click on this copy joining info. Then you can share it with your students. Okay, or you can use this, yeah? uh, you can add uh, people here and then they will be invited through email. Okay, you can also attach Google Meet in your calendar. Let's say you have a class, certain date. 
already you can invite your students when they click on this okay automatically it will go to the google meet at the date that you set up okay so notice that uh, automatically it's already there at google meet video conferencing so we just need to copy and paste the link here okay this is what you will see in your google meet if you click this button it will enable the microphone okay this button here you will enable the camera if you disable it it will show your photo you click this button this click you can get a tenant list so this is very important yeah, for us as a lecturer because we need to get a tenant list of the students and this button is for participant list you would know who is joining yeah, who joined your class or who's not joining yet and it's a chat button okay some students they would like to ask questions uh, by writing instead of verbally okay uh, and then present yeah how to present you can choose whether you want to present entire screen or window okay if you want to show file slide you can click on present window if you present more than that a web page entire screen will be the best okay and then you need to click share button okay this is a grid view if you click this okay if you click this it will give you this Okay, this is a great view. You can see all of your students. Okay, and this is where the chat eh, area where the student can ask questions by typing. Okay, this three dot here. Okay, this is where you can find record meeting. Okay, click this link to record your meeting. Okay, you can locate the email from meet recording. You will get the email 10 to 15 minutes after you have clicked stop recording in Google Meet. Okay, remember you have to click stop recording. Okay, if you do not click, then you will not get the video. Okay, those are very important yeah? reminder. What else here? Okay, turn off captions. By turning on captions, steps of the conversation will appear. Okay, for example, here you say, Hi everyone, how are you? It will be type written for you but of course it has to be in English okay this is this is an extension very important extension for us as a lecturer grid view and attendance okay if you look at grid view okay how to uh, attach the uh, this extension is you try to find a search google made grid view click uh, to Google Chrome the entry and then click to click add to Chrome. Okay, you have to use Google Chrome for this. Okay, this extension enables you to see all students in a grid display. Yeah, all students on screen in Google Meet. For attendance, okay, you try this is the instruction. Open Google, search my attendance, click my attendance, Google Chrome the entry, click add to Chrome. Okay, this extensions enable you to get the attendant list in your email after you end your google meeting sessions okay these two only apply if you use google chrome that is why i encourage please use uh, google chrome uh, for google meet okay that's all for google meet thank you okay our next session is padlet um what is padlet is a blank wall to push Okay, you can post link, image, text, files. I'm going to show you some of the examples of it. So it's an online virtual bulletin board where people used to make and share content with others. Okay, why you want to use Padlet? Eh? Why you should use Padlet? It's easy and intuitive and simple way to publish original content on the internet. You can collaborate with your friends. Okay, maybe for, even if you want to do a research, you can collaborate, you can share articles, okay, share data on the same board. Flexible, you may add any file type you wish, organize how you want and make it as public or as private as your heart desires. Portable, okay, you can use uh, uh, Android, you can use iOS. Okay, and then beautiful. There are many designs that you can choose from, so it's very attractive. Okay, how you can use a Padlet? 
can upload class materials such as syllabus Simon web page, YouTube in your Padlet. You can conduct online activity. Okay, and then you can submit project presentation file to be used in online presentation. The student can submit it so that uh, you can present using only one computer. Okay, and you may want to ask them to submit only in one uh, wall. So it will be much easier. So every, uh, I will show you later in my examples. Okay, let me show how Padlet can be used. Okay, this is an example of all your Padlet, if you have one later. Okay, let me show you one of the samples. Okay, this is, this is uh, let's say in your first day of class, you want to know who is your student. You may want to ask them to introduce themselves you know, by providing their name, their nickname, their phone numbers, their email, okay, where they are from, okay, their diploma, and also whatever you want it to be, and their pictures, very important, okay. So this is like a database. This is one way for them to you know, engage with your uh, class. So these are examples that we can do. You can, you can you know who is your students. Or you can use this for your teaching and learning. You can ask the student, for example, during class, or you can ask them to uh, provide. Okay, like say, for example, this uh, choose different brand and then explain how this cultural, social, person, psychological influence your purchase for this brand. Okay, so they have to explain. And then in the end, they have to put pictures. So this is just, you know, to just make them happy. Okay. What else? Uh, okay, the same thing here. I ask them to state a story and provide brief explanation for your answer. Write the full names, the members' full names, and attach the picture. Now, your explanation should reflect the definition of the story category, principal brand in the capital letter. Do not use the same example yeah, as samples. Okay, because if I provide a sample, I ask them do not use the same yeah, as mine. Okay, so that is how eh, uh, the students, because they, they, they can see their friend's answer, it cannot, they have noticed that the answer is different, they cannot use the same answer. Because the best thing about Padlet, they can see their friends respond, their feedback from their friends. So they cannot choose the same. So this increased competitiveness in students. Okay, and then uh, you can categorize your work. Here, I categorize my work according to general link articles, book, activity. So, example for books here, I put all the books, links of all the books, articles, uh, links, yeah, the URL, and also general. This is how I, main things that you can do. Okay, another thing that I did here for all this is that you can ask students to attach their presentation. For example, like this, okay, uh, students have to attach their presentation. Uh, this is uh, what you can see here. Uh, so let's take, for example, like this one. Uh, so when they attach their presentation, you can use this to present. You don't have, they don't need to bring their own computer or their thumb drive. Yeah, for example, like this, students present T Live, okay, of like the pictures. You can notice that uh, even PowerPoint is very big. Uh, it can uh, attach in all less. Okay, new products, okay, where you can buy tea life. So, it's a very good student. Uh, on okay, how you can buy online, okay, price and promotions, and then advertisement in the media. So, this is uh, the examples. Okay, how to get start with Padlet? Okay, firstly, you have to go to www.padlet.com. Okay, and then you have to click on sign up to create a new Padlet. Yeah, uh, so if you don't have an account yet, so click on this. If you have one, then you need to log in. You've already had an account. Okay, now how to start a Padlet? You need to click make a Padlet. Okay, once you click on make a Padlet, uh, you can decide uh, in what format you want it to be. Is it going to be in grid, stream, canvas, wall, shelf, back channel, map, 
of time, right? Okay, so my advice is please explore. Okay, then they will give you this. Okay, they will give you a title. You have to change it according to what you want. Okay, now you can customize your Padlet. Just click in this icon, uh, this setup icon. Okay, you will get this. Uh, then you can change the title. You can change the description yeah, according to your your, your task. Uh, you can even change the uh the the address the url okay where you want you're going to share it with your students okay you can change the wallpaper if you don't like the one that they gave you the color scheme the font uh the how you post okay your reaction you want it or not okay comment you want to allow comment okay, yeah these are yeah, many interesting things so you have to set up first Okay, if you click this share button, this is for invite, for invitation. You can add members, okay, uh, and then you can change privacy here. I will show you later. You can, yeah, uh, how to share? It's just you need to copy the link to clipboard. You click on this and then you share it, yeah, uh, in your WhatsApp or maybe in the email, okay. That's how it's done. Okay, you can share on Facebook, Twitter, Google Classroom. Okay, once done, you can save everything in your Padlet as an image or PDF. Or you can also print your work. Okay, let's see in terms of change privacy. Okay, you can change privacy uh, here if you want it to be private, password, secret or public. The public meaning anyone can uh, enter your wall. Okay, so it's up to you. Do you want to make it secret? Nobody can find it. Password, you give a password to your students, only your student, only those who know your password can uh, join your Padlet. Okay, so this is uh, how is that you can set up eh, what you want. Okay, if you click this three dot, you can get this menu. Okay, uh, this is center full screen, you want to invite people, you want to modify, you want to change format, you want to clear all posts. You want to remake yeah? you want to remake let's say you have more than one section you do not want to do uh, uh, things twice so you can remake okay how to post you need to press this plus sign okay then you can start posting okay once you click that plus sign you will see this a simple tab with a will appear that allow you to post your content Okay, insert the title of topic of discussion. Uh, you can insert detail of discussion in that area. Uh, you can upload file from PC. You can link, yeah, uh, attach a link to website, YouTube, etc. You can access to camera on your laptop. Okay, uh, this additional function, you can see that uh, you can Upload a file from your computer, uh, you can put a link, you can uh, Google search image, a video, audio, GIF, snap or take a photo from your camera. Uh, this is what uh, the students do. Eh? Uh, sometimes they put, have to put a picture or maybe you ask them to take a pictures of certain uh, uh, promotion or advertisement, uh, assignments, okay, so you can ask them to snap and put it in this. Uh, post it in the Padlet. Okay, that's about it. But eh? very simple. I hope all of you will try it. Assalamualaikum, everyone, and a very good day. So today I'm gonna conduct some kind of a demonstration of how to conduct a live session via Zoom meeting. Now, a bit of introduction about Zoom meeting. Okay, Zoom is actually an American communication technology company quoted in California. Okay, it provides telephony and online chat services through cloud-based peer-to-peer software platform. And it is used for teleconferencing, telecommunicating, instant education, and social relation. 
basically it supports synchronous learning but could be used also to prepare asynchronous teaching materials such as video recording, screen recording and etc. Okay, first and foremost, how to download and sign up. Okay, you go to this particular website, https, okay, zoom.us. Okay, and then you need to click on the sign up over here. All right. Okay, next, okay, fill in all the required details okay, regarding for your death birth okay, verification. Fill in all the details, particularly about your email addresses uh, to register okay, the account. Okay, you can also use okay, other uh, accounts okay, available over here. You can use your Facebook or using your Google account okay, in order to sign up. Okay, with the account of uh, Zoom. Okay, next, okay, make sure you choose. Okay, there are a few plans okay, to be choose from. Okay, starting from the free account up to the pro business and enterprise. Okay, for free account, okay, you can host up to 100 participants in one session. Okay, and you can go up to 40 minutes okay, maximum for each session each session session okay next okay once you did that okay uh, a file will be downloaded okay make sure to click and run for installation so this is basically the steps over here okay run your program okay the uh, installation is in progress okay sign up using the email address okay that you use for sign up just now okay sorry sign in okay using the email address okay that you sign up just now okay and then uh, you will get this particular main menu or zoom okay so to start off okay with a new meeting or your new live session okay you, you click on this new meeting okay so you will be hosting the live session And then a pop-up menu will appear, okay? Uh, click on join with computer audio to use the uh, audio system, okay, available on your devices. Okay, make sure your camera is uh, on, okay, so that you can actually display, okay, the view over there okay, at the background. Okay, first and foremost, how to change a video setting. So you click on uh, video over here, okay, video setting. And then you can choose some uh, settings, okay, that you can change over there, here, over here. Okay, for example, you can choose your virtual background. You can choose, okay, uh, whether you want to enable your high uh, definition, okay, screen. Okay, you can uh, display participant names, okay, on the videos. Okay, and such. So this is, uh, these are the things okay, that you can choose. Okay, you can also change the virtual background as I mentioned before. So if you click virtual background, okay, click here and then choose okay, the available uh, virtual background okay, provided uh, free, provided okay, by Zoom meeting. You can also download it some uh, free virtual background from the internet. Okay, you can just browse okay, and search there's tons okay, of uh, virtual background that you can download for free. Okay, next, how to invite participant in your session. So you click on this participant, okay, click invite okay, over here. Right, and then uh, you can choose your which email address okay, uh, that you're using in order to send invitation to your participant. Okay, this is a sample of how okay, the email looks like. Okay, so you fill in all the participant emails over here. And so this is the uh, link and also the information provided okay, by Zoom. Okay, next, how to choose a screen, which screen to share to your participant. Okay, for example, uh, in my case, okay, I shared uh, the slides okay, for you to view. All right, so there are actually other uh, screen that you can share. Okay, uh, the bluish one here is the current uh, screen. Okay, shared 
Okay, to the participant. Okay, you can choose a PowerPoint slide. Okay, you can choose white mode as well. Okay, if you choose PowerPoint slide, okay, your slideshow will be displayed on the screen and every participant can view the same slide as well as you control. Okay, go through the slide. Okay, if you click on the whiteboard, okay, this is something, uh, a sample of what can be done. Okay, you can type a text or write a text over here. Okay, and everybody or every participant can see okay, what is uh, written okay, on the whiteboard. Okay, and last but not least, okay, before you start with your live session, make sure you click on the record button. Okay, and then you start off okay, with your lecture, okay, and you are good to go. Okay, once you're done okay, with the live session, okay, you can end okay, the meeting for all. Okay, leave meeting is whereby if uh, you are invited to another session okay, by other hosts, okay, whereas end meeting means you are the host. Okay, so you're ending the session for all participants, including yourself. Okay, so once you end the session over here okay your uh, recorded okay, video okay will be okay uh, downloaded okay or will be available okay in the folder and you have to choose uh, a new directory or folder okay where to permanently store okay those videos okay so that's all okay very simple yet Okay, very helpful, I hope. Okay, so thank you for your time and good luck for trying.